Okay, sorry about that. We were, um, I was getting a phone call at the same time. and um, So anyway, the video was starting to get long and I decided to shorten it. So you're going to have a second video. This is the second video. So as we were saying, the bond order for H2 plus is one half. The bond order for H2 is one. The bond order for HE2 with a plus charge, right? Because HE2 should have four electrons total. Each H has two. And basically, we're taking one away because it's a plus ion. And we see that there's two molecular orbital electrons in the bonding and two non-bonding or anti-bonding. And the bond order should be 2 minus 1, which is 1, times 1 half, which is also 1 half. And for the HE2 molecule, there's two bonding and two anti-bonding. And when we subtract those, we get 0. And of course, half of 0 is still 0. So here are the bonding orders for these four different molecules. The H2 molecule we know exists, obviously, and we see that its bond order is 1. Whenever you have a bond order that's greater than 0, that molecule is capable of existing. It would be a stable molecule. The HE2 molecule, you can see, has a bond order of 0, and therefore it's basically the bonds are unstable and therefore this molecule would not exist. So basically you would think that it is po impossible to have an HE2 molecule and no HE2 molecules really have ever been discovered in any situation. Um, we see that the bond orders of these three molecules are greater than zero. The HE2 plus is one half and the H2 plus is also one half. Uh, because the values are low, relatively low, compared to H2, which has a, bo a bond order of 1. We see that these molecules are possible, but not as likely as the H2 molecule. So because the bond order is higher in the H2 molecule, it's, it's more stable and more likely to exist. And because the bond order is lower in these two molecules, they're less likely to exist. Although both of these molecules have been observed under certain situations, but we know that the H2 molecule is very prevalent. And again, we can tell because its bond order is very high, so we've got a stable molecule here. And these two, not as stable, but still can possibly exist. All right, so we're going to skip this one for now. And we're going to start going back to some of these other slides that we kind of skipped before. All right, so here <clears throat> is the diagram for the overlapping of both the 1s and the 2s of a larger molecule. This represents the Li2 molecule. The Li2 molecule now has six electrons. And remember, hydrogen and helium only have electrons in the 1s. Well, our friend lithium has electrons in the 1s and the 2s. So this would be one of our lithium atoms right here. And this is our other lithium atom right there. And we see that the 1s orbitals are overlapping, forming a sigma bonding orbital and a sigma antibonding orbital. And we also notice that the 2s orbitals are overlapping, and they form a sigma bonding orbital and a sigma antibonding orbital. So this is what the molecular orbital configuration would look like for a type of element in which the 1s and the 2s are both overlapping. So the 1s is overlapping with the 1s of one, and the 2s is overlapping with the 2s of the other. We see the difference in the energy between the bonding and the antibonding is smaller for the 1s than it is for the 2s, and this is true for all molecules. And we also see that, um, again, that the bonding has lower energy than the atomic orbitals, and the antibonding has higher energy than the atomic orbitals. And so if we follow the rules that we had discussed before, we've got two, we've got three electrons on this side, we've got two, we've got three electrons on this side. So we've got a total of six, so we're going to fill in order following Hun's rule. So we're going to go from lowest energy to highest, one, two, three, four, five, six. If we're going to do a bond order for this, we'd have two, and then we'd have four. So we have four bonding electrons. Then we would subtract these two anti-bonding electrons. So 4 minus 2 is 2. We're going to take half of that. So we had come up with a bond order of 1. Well, hydrogen has a bond order of 1. We know it's pretty prevalent stuff. So the probability that the lithium-2 molecule, or diatomic lithium, 
whether or not it exists or not, it, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good probability. In fact, the lithium two plus molecule, sorry, not the lithium two plus molecule, the lithium two molecule or the diatomic lithium molecule has been observed. Okay. So, <clears throat> what happens now when we start talking about molecules in which 2p overlap? Well, there's a couple of different ways that 2p orbitals can overlap. See, they can line up like this. So, if, like, say, they're running on the x-axis, like so. So, they can line up like this. And so, we'll get an overlap that occurs on a line between the two nuclei, right? Between the two nuclei. And when that happens, again, we get a constructive interference and we get a destructive interference. We form a bonding molecular orbital and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. And again, because that electron density occurs on, around a line between the two nuclei, they become sigma and sigma star or anti-bonding sigma orbitals. Um, forgot to mention that to you before, whenever you see a star, the star stands for anti-bonding orbital. So we have sigma, which is bonding, and sigma star, which is anti-bonding. But in addition to overlapping on a line that runs along the nuclei, we know that overlap can occur above and below that line, that line between the two nuclei, right? And this is true for Y orbitals or py orbitals but it's also true for pz orbitals as they lay on a different z on the on the z axis okay and they overlap above and below that line and so again we will form constructive interference and destructive interference and we'll form a, a bonding molecular orbital and a non-bonding or anti-bonding molecular orbital but because the overlap is not around that line because it's above and below that line between the nuclei, these are pi bonds, okay? So we get a bonding pi molecular orbital and a sigma, I'm sorry, and a pi star anti-bonding molecular orbital, not sigma. It's a pi star anti-bonding molecular orbital. <coughs> and so, <coughs> excuse me, we get both sigma bonding and sigma anti-bonding, and we get pi bonding and pi anti-bonding. And we see here are the here are the one there are the two p and here are the overlap and we get the the pi and the pi star and then we get the sigma and the sigma star and we see that the energy difference between the sigma and the sigma star is a little bit bigger than it is between the pi and the pi star. So this is what the um, molecular orbital configuration would look like for the overlap of our two p orbitals. So when our p orbitals overlap, we're going to get two pi orbitals or two pi molecular orbitals that are bonding, and we're going to get two pi star or anti-bonding orbitals. And we see that the the pi's because one is from the y and one is from the z, they are lowest in energy. And then of course, the sigma or the pi stars, excuse me, are higher in energy, but their energy is above the sigma bonding orbital. The sigma bonding orbital is here. Whoops, let's go back. Sorry about that. And the sigma star anti bonding orbital is here. So this would be the way that the energy is set up for the orbital. So you would fill the pi um, bonding first, and then you would fill the sigma then you would start filling the pi star or antibonding and then finally the highest energy is that sigma star. So this is the order of the energy for the molecular orbital configuration. So we've done this one and let's move on and we, oh, we've talked about this one and let's move on to this one here. <coughs> okay, this <coughs> is a, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, this is a set of diagrams for the lithium-2 molecule, the B-2 molecule, the C-2 molecule, the N-2 molecule, the O-2 molecule, and the F-2 molecule. So here are molecular orbital configurations for all of those. Now, they are showing the 2s sigma and the 2s sigma star, and they're showing the sigma and pi orbitals as the 2s orbitals overlap and the 2p orbitals overlap 
for each of these different molecules. They're not showing the 1S. We know they're overlapping, but they're not a, of the greatest concern because we can see more about these molecules in terms of whether they're paramagnetic or diamagnetic um, in the later orbitals. So we did the Li2 and we know that the 1s overlapped and we'd get sigma 2, a 1s would be full and then the sigma 2s is full. We find that the bond order is 1 and that the bond length is this and then here's the bond enthalpy. Now here's the configuration for B2. Now B2 has 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons, right? Each B has 4, so 8 electrons total, and we're talking about 2 from the 1S, 2 from the 2S, and um, uh, let's see, no, how many electrons do we have? Am I miscounting? 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, so it's got to be 4 from each. So we're going to have 8 electrons, and obviously the 1S orbitals that overlap to form the sigma 1s or the sigma s the sigma 1s pi now let's try this again all right let's figure it let's ignore the s's all right let's go just for the sigma 2s sorry about that it's saturday morning it's early when I, I was hoping to get this done for you guys so okay what we see here is that the electrons are being placed following the huns rule and we see that we've got two electrons in the pi bonding orbitals and the bond order ends up being 1 bond length is 159 here we see that we have a bond order for C2 of 2 a bond order of N2 of 3 a bond order of O2 of 2 and a bond order of F2 as being 1 we see that the bond orders are very high we also notice that the bond lengths as we go from 1 to 1 to 2 to 3 the bond lengths are getting shorter and we see that the bond enthalpies are also getting greater. We notice that as the bond order gets bigger, we see that the bond lengths get smaller and the bond enthalpies become greater. So obviously we know that the shorter the length of the bond, the stronger the bond is. So the greater the bond order, the shorter the length, and the more energy it's going to take to break that bond because that's remember that's what a bond enthalpy tells us and the more energy there is, the more energy it's going to take to break the bond and the stronger that bond is. And so, uh, see bond order higher, bond order lower. And again, we see how the electrons are being filled in order. Uh, nitrogen has a total of 14 electrons, right? Uh, two go into the, uh, the sigma and the sigma star from the 1s, and then we've got the sigma and the sigma star from the 2s and then we've got two going into the into the pi's and then we have the sigma 2p bonding orbitals here and we see that based upon the configuration we can make proper predictions about whether or not the molecule is diamagnetic or paramagnetic and again you can see down below for simplicity these guys have been emitted these two orbitals hold a total of four electrons remember that for o2 and f2 the the sigma 2 pz is lower in energy than 2 pi and did it to do okay so we see <coughs> that for these two molecules there's a bit of a switch in terms of the energies um, we've moved the pi's here and switched them with with the sigmas so the sigma of the 2p and the pi of the 2p's have been switched in terms of their energy so for these molecules, O2 and F2, this is true. And for these molecules, the order that we gave you previously was also true. All right, I'm going to end this video. Um, take a good look at these. Uh, I know I haven't been exactly as clear as possible, but hopefully, at least towards the end anyway, but hopefully these will help you. And if, if you do have any questions, uh, see Mr. Walsh or myself. Have a good break, uh, break and uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Bye.